Okay, in this video we're going to derive some really interesting identities involving the Riemann zeta function, which is a super important function in analytic number theory, which has to do with the distribution of the primes. So let's recall what that function is first. So uh, the zeta function evaluated at s is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the s. And it turns out that this automatically converges if the real part of s is bigger than 1, and then it can be analytically continued to almost the entire complex plane. The only place that it cannot be continued is the vertical line where the real part is equal to 1. So previously on some other videos we uh, derived the following identities. So if you take the sum of all of the even values of the zeta function minus 1, you get 3 quarters. Then if you take the sum of all of the values of the zeta function which are multiples of 4 minus 1, you get this object which is 7 eighths minus pi over 4 e to the 2 pi plus 1 over e to the 2 pi minus 1. We also derived a similar um, identity when you have 4n plus 2, which you can actually get pretty easily just by combining these two. Then there are some other well-known facts about the zeta function. First of all, zeta of 1 diverges. Notice that's going to be the harmonic series. Then zeta of 2 is pi squared over 6. That's uh, Euler's famous sum. Zeta of 4 is pi to the 4th over 90. In fact, all even values of zeta are rational numbers times powers of pi. And in fact, it, they're even powers of pi corresponding to the input of the zeta function. And then you might say, well, what about odd values of the zeta function? Would they be the odd powers of pi, but in fact they're not, and there's a deep conjecture in mathematics that says that you should think of the odd values of the zeta function as brand new constants, like they're all algebraically independent of each other and of other more common constants. So that's why I've written here zeta of 3 is a new constant. Okay, so let's look at our goals for this video. So the first thing that we're going to prove is that the sum in equals uh, 1 to infinity of zeta 2n minus zeta 2n plus 1 converges to a nice number. We'll see what that is. And then from this, uh, we'll be able to derive these two identities as well, or values for these two sums, I should say, using our previous work. So we can find uh, the sum of all of the odd values minus 1, and then we can find the sum of all the values minus 1 as well. So I'll clean up this part of the board, and then we'll get to our new identity. So let's get into it. We're going to look at this identity first, because this is going to be used as a tool for proving these two identities, along with the fact that we have from our previous video. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take this guy and rewrite the zeta function using its definition. So this is going to be the sum uh, k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the 2n minus the sum k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the 2n plus 1. But now we can uh, just add those sums. Notice they're indexed in a nice way so that we can do that already. Um, that's going to give us the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the sum k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the 2n minus 1 over k to the 2n plus 1. Okay. Now what I want to do is give these guys a common denominator, which is pretty easy. This first one is just missing one um, power of k, so I'll add one to that and put a k in the numerator. That's going to allow me to write this as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the sum k equals 1 to infinity of k minus 1 over k to the 2n plus 1. Another thing that we can notice is that the k equals 1 term is 0 because we've got k minus 1 up in the numerator, so I'm actually going to take that out and let it start at 2. The next trick is we want to change the order of summation, and this is going to be allowed because we have absolute convergence. Um, I'll let you guys think about that and check it and look up in some sort of analysis book if you're psyched. Um, so that's going to allow us to write this as the sum k equals 2 to infinity, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the same thing, k minus 1 over k to the 2n plus 1. 
Now what I want to do is factor out something involving k from this inner sum, leaving uh, something involving n which is kind of obviously summable um, on the inner sum dealing with n. So uh, in fact what I want to do is take this, write it as the sum k equals 2 to infinity. I'll take out a k and a k cubed. And then I'll notice that what's left on the inside is the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared to the n minus 1. So now we can just like quickly check that that's the same. Notice that gives us a k to the 2n minus 2 in the denominator. We multiply that by k cubed and we get 2n minus 1. And this should be k minus 1 on the top. Okay, great. But the good thing about this is that this is a geometric series with our common ratio is 1 over k squared. And I should say our starting term, maybe I'll call that A like it is in most textbooks, is 1. So we have a starting term of 1 and a common ratio of k squared. That's actually why I took the whole k cubed out, is so that it have a starting term of 1. All right, and so that means uh, we can sum this. Let's just recall that geometric series sum to A over 1 minus R. So that's going to give us the sum k equals 2 to infinity of k minus 1 over k cubed, and now we have 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 over k squared. Now we're going to go ahead and take this case, k cubed, and distribute it on to both of these terms, and that's going to give us the sum k equals 2 to infinity of um, k minus 1 over um, k cubed minus k. But the next thing that we want to notice is that this k cubed minus k can easily factor. So we can take a k out. After taking a k out, we have k squared minus 1, which we can factor like k plus 1 times k minus 1. Notice this k minus 1 is going to cancel with this guy in the numerator. And that's going to leave us with this is the sum k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k times k plus 1. Now we can use a trick from calculus 2, which is partial fraction decomposition, to rewrite this as the sum k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. So you can just check that adding those two um, rational functions in k together will give you this rational function in k. But notice that is going to be a telescoping series and in fact everything will cancel except for the first term and the first term is going to give us a half. So this is like a really common example of a telescoping series from like the very first day when you do series in calculus 2. So we get a half. So notice that means the value of this guy right here which was our first goal is one half. So we're done with this first part. And now we're ready to move on to this next identity. Okay, so uh, let's see how we can do this. Um, let's start with the one that we know. So we know that 1 half equals the sum n equals 1 to infinity of zeta 2n minus zeta 2n plus 1 like that. But now what I want to do is add zero inside of this sum and I'm going to add zero in the following way. I'll subtract one from this term and I'll add one to that term. So after regrouping we get this is the sum n equals 1 to infinity of zeta 2n minus 1 minus zeta 2n plus 1 minus 1. Great and we're taking the sum of that whole thing. But now both of those series converge. Well, we showed this series converged in a previous video. This series will converge for a uh, similar reason. In fact, I think you can do it just by uh, the comparison test. This series will have uh, all numbers that are smaller than this series. So it obviously converges. So this is going to give us the sum n equals 1 to infinity 
zeta 2n minus 1 plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity, zeta 2n plus 1 minus 1. And I should have said this is uh, minus this sum. So in our previous video, we showed that thing was a quarter. So I mean three quarters. So I can replace this thing with three over four. And now notice that we have an, an equation um, that we can use to solve for our second goal. So notice that this tells us that our second goal, in other words, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the odd zeta function minus 1 is equal to, so notice it's going to be 3 quarters minus a quarter, minus a half, which is 1 quarter. So uh, we've derived this identity. This is going to be equal to 1 quarter. And now we're ready to move on to this one. Okay, so now that we have these two parts, uh, the sum of zeta 2n minus zeta 2n plus 1 is equal to a half, and the sum of zeta 2n plus 1 minus 1 is a quarter, along with our previous one, which was the sum of zeta 2n minus 1 was equal to um, 3 quarters, we can actually move on to calculate this one. In other words, the sum of zeta n plus 1 minus 1 and find out what that is. So notice I started this at n equals 1, which is is I'm, why I need an n plus 1 there because zeta of 1 diverges like we said earlier. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to rewrite it slightly. I'm going to re-index it so I go 2 to infinity instead of 1 to infinity, which is going to have us write this as just zeta n minus 1. Notice this starts at zeta 2, that one starts at zeta 2 as well. Now the next thing that I want to do is break this apart into even parts of the sum and odd parts of the sum. So I'll just do it like this. I'll say n equals 2 to infinity of zeta n minus 1. And I'll say this is only over even numbers. And then plus the sum n equals 3 to infinity of zeta n minus 1. And this is only over odd numbers. Now, the next thing that I can do is I can re-index. So I'll re-index here, and I'll let n become 2n. And then I'll re-index here, and I'll let n become uh, 2n plus 1. So that's going to give me the sum um, n equals 1 to infinity, because notice if 2n equals 2, n equals 1. And now I have zeta uh, 2n minus 1 plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity because if 2n plus 1 equals 3, then n equals 1. And now I have zeta 2n plus 1 minus 1. But these two sums are the same. This only sums over n equals 2, 4, 6, 8, but that's all we're getting is entries into the zeta function. And this only sums over 3, 5, 7, 9, but again, that's all we're getting is entries into the zeta function right here. But by the previous video, we know this one is equal to 3 quarters. And by our uh, previous calculation in this video, we know that this one is equal to 1 quarter, which makes our final answer equal to 1. In other words, the sum n equals 2 to infinity of zeta n minus 1 is equal to 1, which I think is a nice, beautiful identity. And so now we're done with this, and that finishes the video.